Hello, what's going on? Everybody, Patrick here, and uh, well, let's just start right off. Here we are sitting at an airfield called Echo November Foxtrot Foxtrot. It's the Icalco. Uh, Not sure what the name of the airfield is, but it's a very interesting airfield. As you can see, we have uh, looks like what's a cabin here, and it's a grass runway here. And it's only about 1,500 meters. I thought in this video I'd just uh, start up the T6 here and take it on a spin, do some uh, do some touch and goes on this airfield. Do some touch and goes and then do a nice landing on this airfield is what I'm going to attempt to do. So let's just hop right in. Here we are in the cockpit of the T6 Texan. Very nice cockpit. It's the ATA T6 Texan. Uh, First thing we could do is uh, kind of familiar familiarize ourselves. You, get, you know, we got the, the throttle and the mixture on the propeller over here. And uh, the manual fuel pump lever, landing gear lever, carburetor heat, which is on because I just parked it here right before starting the recording. Um, we have the elevator trim here and the rotor trim behind, which I'm just going to leave where it is. We have fuel selector, fuel quantity, uh, and the flap lever, which is kind of... Uh, if you put it to the up position, the flaps will continuously move up. If you put it to the down position, they'll continuously move down and lock is to stop where they are. So we're just going to leave that in the down position for now because we are parked and we like those to be in the down position. Over here we have electrics, um, electronics. So we have the circuit breakers, you know, engine time. I have about 7.1 hours on this engine. Uh, lights and uh, exterior lights and then uh, here are generator battery avionics and smoke arm we got the main dash you know manifold pressure rpm the oil pressure and temperature as well the fuel pressure cylinder head pressure or just correction temperature and the uh, you know the airspeed the uh, attitude indicator altitude uh, heading indicator all that good stuff we also got the autopilot module installed in here i don't know how to get the altitude to work but i have figured out how to get the the heading to work. So first thing we can do is uh, fire up the battery. And there we go. You see we get some get, get some action in some of these levers. Uh, we can see our oil temperature is pretty hot so the start should be pretty easy for us. Oil pressure is uh, zero, fuel pressure is zero. And what we could go ahead and do now is, is select the fuel tank so currently the right fuel tank is more fuel so we'll select the right fuel tank and we can start priming it so what we want to do is we just want to have the primer ready here and start pumping and as we pump you can see the fuel pressure will go up and then drop down again so we'll pump it make sure it's at five or four psi and then keep pumping and prime at the same time There we go. You should prime probably around five times if it's a cold start. I've primed the three now since um, I was just running. You can see my cylinder head temperature is uh, still hot. I'm going to align our heading indicator with the compass. We're standing around 106 and 105. Uh, we can change it up. Uh, actually, we can't do that. It won't let us go detailed enough to change just the one. Okay, never mind. There we go. And the altimeter, we can just press B to get the altimeter because I can't be bothered to pull up the QH right now. 1018, so slightly high pressure. After that's done, we can go ahead and put, you know, a mixture to full as we prepare to start the engine. Now, ATA has, uh, has all of these nice, uh, like, um, controls for each aircraft. And uh, I was looking at the wrong checklist. It has a checklist too, but I've read through it a few times, so I know what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm still by no way a certified pilot for this aircraft in any form of way. Uh, like I said, right tank has more fuel. And, oh god, the voice crack. Mm, I think. Pretty sure. I mean, it's just me on board today. Low luggage. Oil looks, looks good, about 70 gallons. That should be enough. We're just doing some touch and goes. Cabin is cold and steady, yes, because it's cold outside, minus 5, so we should get the canopy closed as soon as we get this engine running and start heating up the cabin. We can check, once, we can check the hangar just to show you. 
Minecraft in good shape. Uh, both the airframe and the engine have 7.1 hours on record. Alright, so back to the startup. What we want to do, if you're coming in this aircraft called... Let me just bring the mixture back. And close the cabin heat. You want to hand prop it, and you also want the oil clean kit hanging under the propeller. Basically what happens when you leave this aircraft sitting on the ground for a long time, that oil is going to drain down into the bottom uh, cylinder and you kind of you want to empty that out so when you come back you put on the oil clean kit you can actually leave that on when you leave the aircraft and then when you come back make sure you do the hand prop and you should see about nine props or nine to, uh, nine times the propeller should pass up here and that, that that'll be good for us since i've been out flying and now to start the, the the engine we're gonna put the mixture to full and we're gonna do propeller to a full decrease and then add just a little bit of fuel there we go about about half an inch the starters on the floor and what we do is we press the starter we wait for four propellers and then engage the magneto so we'll do that now so one two three four and we'll engage the magnetos and Looks like we got a good start here. We're just gonna give it some throttle, level off at about 1000 RPM. Looks like the wind is blowing this way, so we're gonna have to take off uphill today, but that shouldn't be any problem. I've done that earlier. So once we get everything running, we can go and turn on the generator. I don't know if you guys can see this. We'll turn on the generator, we'll turn on the avionics. Navigation lights, so we'll just make them bright and pedo heat since it's very cold where I am. Um, and that's about it for here. Make sure that the primer is locked and then we can open up the cabin heater just a little bit. 75% is probably good. Also, we want to check that our oil pressure has come up and once it's above 40 psi, we can go ahead and bring that prop all the way up to full. Now to do a run-up, make sure that the parking brake here is pulled. And that should have actually been checked before you started the engine, my bad. And we'll go ahead and throttle up to 1600 RPM. And once we're there, we're going to cycle the prop, so pull the prop all the way to decrease. And all the way back up. Now. We can also check the carburetor. I like to just leave it on even if I'm on the ground so I don't forget it. You can check the, uh, Actually, we, we need to throttle now up to about 2000 RPM and then we can check the carburetor. Burning off some excess of oil. Let's check the carburetor. See that the RPM does drop a little bit. We'll just leave it on for now actually. Just apply a little more throttle, get back up to 2000 RPM. We'll check the hydraulic pressure by raising our flap. The hydraulic pressure does drop as we start raising the flap, which is what we want to see. And then we want to check our magnetos. So, first the right one. See that it drops about 100 RPM, which is good. Put it back to both, see that it comes back up, and then back to the left. Drops about 100 RPM. And we can put it back to on. And at this point, we can bring back the throttle. You have to be very careful with the throttle in this. I'm probably going to end up doing it myself, but if you move the throttle up and down uh, very quickly, then you're going to have all sorts of bangs and detonations and stuff. So you do not want to be rough with the throttle in this old warplane. We're going to shut the canopy here. And we'll turn on the landing lights, which are these two. And we can turn on the strobe lights. Release the parking brake by just tapping on the brake or just uh, pushing the parking brake lever in. Now our engine is all warmed up, everything is in the green. We're on grass, so I need a little extra throttle. Now if you well, that was close. If you push the yoke, which I actually by the way don't have here. Oh make sure you don't do that. Make sure you don't like lock the controls. 
if you push the yoke all the way forward, you release the tail wheel. I think all the way back is to lock it, but I am not sure. I'm just going to remove that for now. I think we just ate a cone. Once again, this is Echo November Foxtrot Foxtrot. I landed here earlier uh, from the other side and I almost went off the bend of the runway here so we're just gonna hope that doesn't happen now but we're gonna take off the other way anyways. And we're gonna unlock our tail wheel and just kind of spin her around here. And then apply some throttle, try to line her up. And then once we get all nice and lined up We'll hold the stick back. Apply full throttle. Uh, just one thing you want to check before you start. Make sure your elevator trim is back to about the 11 o'clock position and your rudder trim goes forward. I like to keep my rudder trim on 25 to the right and the elevator trim on 23 to the rear. That kind of fluctuates depending on my weight, but that's what I'm keeping it on today. So hold the brakes. Apply full throttle. Release the brakes. And hold the stick back, lock the tail wheel. We're gonna let go of the stick here as the tail wheel comes off the ground. We're gonna rotate at about 80 to 90 miles per hour. There we are. And then I'm gonna pull the gear up, which is this lever right here. We can see that the, the greens on the engines have gone away. We like to fly over the water today, so we're going to just do a right-hand traffic pattern. Not that it matters, you usually want to do a left-hand because, like in a Cessna, you'd be sitting on the left side of the plane as the pilot in command. But in here, you sit in the center, so it's not its not going to matter. It's going to make n less noise for the inhabitants anyway. So we'll just join a downwind here. She's a real nice bird to fly once you get her all trimmed out and everything. Just bring back the throttle. And try to align ourselves with the downwind heading. There's a little bit of uh, texture clipping going on with the track IR. Just fly downwind a little more. To bring back the throttle now to about 15 bar on the manifold. You just want to keep the RPM, like the prop and the mixture, at maximum for landing. Since we're just doing touch and goes, uh, there's no need to start leaning the engine or anything. As we turn here, we'll lower our gear and drop the flat lever. Let that come down. And then try to maintain around 100 miles per hour on the approach here. For two wheel landing, which is what we're going to be doing on the first touch and go here, you want to maintain 90 miles per hour at the point of touchdown. But uh, uh, as you approach, you want to maintain around 100 miles per hour. Try to just get ourselves trimmed out here. It's a lot of pressure on the stick I can feel. To give it a little more thrust. A little more power. Just kind of maintain level fly here. And we have to remember the runway is upward sloping so you might need a little bit extra speed as you touch down. I'm going to touch down the two no main gears and then Apply full power and go around and do it again. Around 90 miles per hour. There we are. Not too bad. Apply full thrust. And to go around. Pull the gear up. And the flaps can come up. Start a right here. back around.
And for this one, we're just going to do a three-point landing. Yeah, I've actually looked at the clock now. It's starting to get a little late here. So we're going to delay that last touch and go and make it a full stop landing instead and park our plane and shut down for the night. This is in Norway, by the way. Thank you, November. As we descent, we can try to maintain around 125 miles per hour. So trim it for 125 miles per hour. There we go. And we'll go ahead and lower the gear and the flap as we begin our turn to join finally here. Maintain around 100 miles per hour. We overshot this one it looks like. Oh yeah, that's no problem but we'll just line it back up. Try to trim out again at 100 miles per hour. So we're going to approach at about 95, and once we come over the threshold, which hopefully want to be really low, we'll reduce throttle to idle and try to do a three-point landing. There's a lot of trimming going on in this aircraft. Once you really find the trim, it becomes really comfortable to fly. A little low here. And we're going to bring the thrall to idle. And it's kind of hard to do a three-pointer on the grass, but I think that wasn't too bad. Just uh, gently apply the brakes here, because we're going uphill, so slowing down is not that difficult. And we're gonna pull off the side here and park where we started. There's, that's good. We'll apply the parking brake. And what we do to shut this thing down is we're going to apply about 1450 RPM. So we increase throttle until we hit around 1450 RPM. I'm just going to turn off the landing lights and the strobes and pedo heat and all that stuff right now. We can turn off avionics. And what we do is we bring the propeller to idle for about 20 seconds. Now, by the way, guys, all of this is in the checklist, too. I can show you right here, the shutdown checklist. You want to prop full decrease is what we're on, about 20 seconds. I don't have a timer with me. We're going to hope that 20 seconds has gone by. We're going to reduce the mixture to zero. And then as the engine stops or begins to stop turning, we turn off the magnetos. So mixture zero engine is stop spinning and we put the magnetos to zero and you can switch off the battery right away and take off the generator I'm gonna shift up here my view and we can select and uh, turn off the fuel tank selector bring just the throttle back to idle current rate heat off cabin heater uh, closed and we'll go ahead and lock up the controls and we're gonna open up the canopy Tie yourselves down, wheel chocks, you know, all that good stuff. Put on the pedal covers. We can go ahead and open the back. Uh, we're going to open, open the rear canopy as well. And that is how you fly the T6 Texan in a pattern. So if this was uh, useful uh, in any form of way, just 
out let me know any supports appreciated and uh, tell me if you guys want to see anything else like this uh, one last thing just whenever you park a plane like this you should always leave the flaps down so that when no one steps on it and mate forces them down that's not good even though you can't really do that here but i'm gonna leave my flaps down it kind of varies but i'm pretty sure you leave the flaps down okay thank you guys very much for watching and uh bye bye